Cole Hernandez Hammer. It's based n near um, in Miami. Miss Hammer works to address the disproportionate impacts of climate change on Latinos in southeastern states and nationally. A Guatemalan immigrant with Cuban heritage. Today, Ms. Jimenez uh, Hammer works to mobilize the Latino community to address, to better understand and address climate change's disproportionate effects on health of Hispanics. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman Cummings and this very distinguished committee for the opportunity to speak to you today about the disproportionate climate change impacts that are already affecting low-income communities and Latino families. I was born in Guatemala, and I grew up as a proud American and proud immigrant in South Florida. I've seen firsthand how quickly a thriving city can turn into a disaster zone. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew blew my home away. We were not evacuated, so we were home when the storm hit. The storm was one of the reasons I was drawn to studying the natural sciences. As a Latina and a scientist, I became particularly interested in how sea level rise affects Latino communities. I began to look at U.S. Census information and paired it with sea level rise maps. I noticed that the places that are the most at risk for sea level rise in the U.S., including Florida, New York, California, and Texas, are also the places that have the largest and or the fastest growing Latino populations. The same can be said for heat. The very uh, kind of extreme heat that Phoenix will be experiencing this weekend will become more common and more severe in the future. Heat and sea level rise are two of the climate change impacts we will no longer be able to completely avoid. This is most evident in record-setting increases in temperature and in the impacts of sea level rise during sunny day flooding events. What we call sunny day flooding is simply flooding that is caused by a combination of the highest tides of the year and the sea level rise we've had over approximately the last 100 years. Using U.S. Army Corps of Engineers sea level rise projections, we anticipate that in Miami, we will go from about six to 12 sunny day flooding events per year to more than 380 events of significant tidal flooding in Miami-Dade County within the next 30 years. We are anticipating similar increases in other parts of the country, including Washington, D.C. In my work, I use elevation maps to identify low-lying locations at the block level. Then I overlay that information with income data to identify places that are both low-lying and low-income. I use NOAA title information to identify the days of the highest tides, and on those dates, I go to those locations I've mapped to see if these communities are indeed experiencing sunny day flooding. And if so, begin education and resident-led advocacy work there in partnership with community-based organizations. In high-end areas of South Florida, like Miami Beach and Las Olas, they are actively taking steps to reduce flooding impacts, but in low-income communities, there is little action. I spoke to residents in low-lying, low-income communities of color in Miami just this fall. Some were not able to get out of their homes during the high tides to go to work because the roads were flooded. Kids couldn't get to their school bus stops. One resident had to walk through contaminated floodwaters and subsequently had a leg infection as a result. Recent research indicated that there is an extremely high level of human feces in these types of floodwaters. One resident, Maria Escobar, told me that in order to take the trash out, she had to cover her legs in trash bags and walk her garbage cans down two blocks because the trucks were not coming down the road due to flooding. All these things happened on days when there was not a single drop of rain. My colleagues and I analyzed the flooding and concluded these events were caused by sea level rise which is a direct result of human-caused climate change. We are working to find equitable sea level rise adaptation solutions in these communities, and we are demanding that those solutions be carbon neutral. As a person of color and an immigrant, I know we are especially resilient. That's why we are here. But we need to present our children with more than survival. I want to offer my son a better world, one in which we'll not merely survive, but thrive. This is why I ask today that as you develop your plans for the future, make climate change mitigation and adaptation a top priority. Communities need sound, actionable science, policymakers who really listen to them, and many more resources to cope with the worsening impacts to come. The good news is that we have the solutions to cut emissions. 
And as our nation transfers away from coal and towards cleaner renewable sources of electricity, the benefits of this transition must accrue especially to communities of color and low-income communities. The renewable ener energy revolution must be rooted in fairness and justice. My partners, my community, and I will be there to support you and to remind you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Thank you very much.